and welcome to Literary Hype. I am Stephanie, your Literary Hype Woman, back with another author conversation for you, and this is such a fun one, and it's a dream come true to get to talk to these two. Um, you, if you've heard of Christina Lauren, maybe you've thought that there was one person. It is two women. We have Christina Hobbs and Lauren Billings, and they write together as Christina Lauren. Um, they are currently promoting their book, The True Love Experiment, which is one of my favorite books of the year. I am absolutely obsessed with this book. It is the sequel to The Soulmate Equation, so you get a little bit of Jess and uh, River from this book in here and the technology that was developed. Um, this book is so fantastic. And so without any further ado, let's talk about this book and hear from Christina and Lauren. The last time we talked back in San Diego, we were just getting word that BTS was gonna all go solo. Now we've got five of the seven albums. Let's rank the five albums that are out so far. Oh my gosh, we could get in a lot of trouble we for could, this. We could, we <laughs> could. Um, I mean, I just have to say Indigo is so amazing. Um, that one really blew me away because we didn't know what to expect because his sounds have been so different from like mono to RM. So that one I think really blew us away. And that's her bias too, so we're just gonna say. Number one. Funny. Yeah. I mean, obviously. Yeah. But, I mean, D-Day was real strong. Yeah, we saw him at the forum. And thank you guys for that note in your acknowledgments for booksellers to fly through the Ticketmaster queue. Yes! Because I read that book and then immediately got the last row of shipment tickets. Oh, oh my, my god. god. That's we were the last row in, the, in that venue. But it was still great. Karma. <laughs> Um, so BTS kind of does play a role in your new book, The True Love Experiment, because you created a band based on them. What was that like, crafting something out of something you love? It was so much fun. I mean, like, so much fun. We had just, when we were writing it, we had just gone to Permission to Dance in L.A. Um, we went to those, like, four shows, and so we were able to, like, capture some of the, like, frustrations of waiting in line, and then the, like, over like whelming joy that happens the minute like the lights go down and also how everybody goes to those shows it's not just like yeah. teenage fangirls it's like little girls with their moms it's people our age with the groups of our girlfriends it's like our people our mothers or grandmothers age it's dudes in a group of guy friends like you see everybody at these shows and i think there's not just one kind of fan for them so we wanted to make sure we got that in there and i do appreciate that because i was dipping my toe into ARMY uh -huh. and still kind of questioning me like, okay, am I too old for this? Because everybody seemed to be like, oh, it's for teenagers. But seeing you guys be so vocal of your love of it was like, okay, I can do this. But Good. It, it's just like romance. Like everybody thinks they know who the like general romance reader is. Is it mostly women? Yes, but like we have more and more men or like non-binary people coming to our book signings every day. Like every single one has been different and they they range from ages. So it's just, there's just like no one fan of anything. And that really plays into the story of the True Love Experiment. So you want to talk about where things are as we find Fizzy at the start of this book and what kind of a journey she's on right now. So Fizzy is a beloved romance author and at the beginning of the True Love Experiment she's in kind of a rut. She's sort of just recently had this epiphany where she's written dozens of love stories but she's never actually been in love herself. And so eventually she'll meet the hero who is Connor Prince and he's a single dad, he's a documentary filmmaker and he really likes his life, he's fine with his life. There's no romance to speak of, but he's happy. And his boss comes to him and says, listen, if you wanna keep your job, you need to make a reality dating show. And Connor's totally out of his, his depth. And so he stumbles upon Fizzy's books and he thinks what would be better TV than finding true love for the queen of romance herself. So sparks fly between them, but he's been tasked with finding her soulmate and it shouldn't be him, so. I really love the concept of this reality show that you guys created, and I really want it to be a show anyway. <laughs> How did that come about? Um, so I don't watch a ton of, of reality TV because it makes me super anxious when people get messy. Um, there's like no guarantee of a happily ever after. You have no idea what's going to happen. Lo loves like um, Survivor, Alone, like all of these sort of like crafty endurancey kind of shows. Um, but we, you know, there's a t everything's been done, just like Connor says in the book, like everything has been done. So we wanted something that was like completely different. And I actually woke up from a dream where I was like, 
I thought that somebody had optioned it and I was for like a hot second I was so excited and then I remembered like oh right the technology that the show is based on is not actually a thing that exists which is kind of a bummer. I know. <laughs> Can you imagine? I mean, that would save a lot of drama, I feel like. Yes, it would. It's you true. know, getting to just, here's my DNA. Who's my perfect match? Yes. Find it for me. <laughs> you guys weren't initially planning to write a sequel to The Soulmate Equation, and it was like kind of a fan fan driven drive to get this to happen. Um, what was the kind of the spark that was like, okay, we can do this story and we, we can do it well? Like, a lot, so many fan service novels aren't exactly the best, but yeah. this one is like my favorite book of the year so far. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, we, we created Fizzy and the Soulmate Equation to be the best friend, sort of like the comedic sidekick. And when you create characters like that, you usually don't think you know, about what their vulnerabilities are necessarily or what, you know, are going to be their struggles because we're really there focusing on Jess's struggles in the soulmate equation. But Fizzy's funny and she like stole every scene that she was in and so we get that. And when we went on virtual tour at every stop, readers were like, is Fizzy going to get her own book? And we were really nervous about whether we could do it right because she's a romance author. So we didn't want it to feel like to like inside jokey with other authors. We wanted it to feel really accessible to romance readers. But also she's Chinese American. And so we had to find a way to tell a love story for Fizzy that felt universal and not sort of culturally relevant to a Chinese American woman. And um, so we kind of waited until we had the right idea. And then once we did, we knew that we could recruit the help of Chinese American pre-readers to help us get that side of things right. But really the story would be more of a universal love story about two people falling in love who aren't supposed to fall in love, right? Was it cathartic for you guys to write from the perspective of a romance author? It was, actually, and I think that surprised us. Like, I think we worried that it would be harder to make it feel interesting because, you know, being a romance author is the best job. and We love what we do, but most of our day is, like, us, you know, talking to each other about what we're going to do sitting and staring at a computer and writing and like maybe putting on a bra and going outside at some point like the, the like details of being a romance author aren't that exciting and so you know you have to make sure you write about a character like that in a way that makes them seem compelling and like they have full interesting lives which we do but like that piece of it is not super interesting to read about but the thing is the book ended up not really being about her as a writer that's just a piece of who she is and so, um, yeah, that part ended up being way easier and so much more fun. Because then we got to really focus on Fizzy's perspective on the readers and how much she loves her readers. And that felt so authentic to us because that really just came from us and how we feel about the community and our readers. This really reads as like a, fan a love letter to fangirls. Mm -hmm. um, what do you hope people take away from that in the spirit of fangirling or just in general from the story? Um, that there are no guilty pleasures, that like life is like about joy and finding joy and protecting the things that bring you joy and love the things you love and like just stop worrying about what other people think about it. And if these books give our readers even a moment, like in a couple hours away from whatever is going on in their life, then we feel like we've done our jobs. So last time we talked, you had mentioned that on Honeymooners was getting ready to cast its lead for the movie. Has there been any progress on the movie for on Honeymooners? Yeah, so we, we actually have all of cast. It's been fully financed. Um, we have a director, but because of the writer's strike that's going on, even though the script is done, um, the writers and directors are definitely getting, be or the actors and directors are getting behind the writers. So everything is kind of ground to a halt. Um, which is actually something that I want to just like sidebar real quick, which is that like in the True Love Experiment, there is a reality dating show. And with the writer's strike, one of the things that networks are going to start doing is relying more heavily on unscripted television. But I just kind of want your viewers um, to be conscious about what kinds of media they're consuming because the reality programming does not favor like writers at all. And so um, we just want writers to be able to get fair wages and, and to have the studios come to the table and really give them a fair offer. So like, if you start seeing more unscripted TV, just be aware of what that means. You guys also were working on the screenplay for Roomies. 
are you are you guys part of the the writers union is that like directly affecting you guys working on roomies or where is that process at right now so we're not wga yet um that's something that will come later but that script is done the movie sold to village roadshow um, we have our whole director and producing team already and so we're just casting it right now and what are you guys working on next uh, so we have a full cast recording audio original called The Honeymoon Crashers that is sort of like a, it's like a follow up to the um, Unhoneymooners and it has Harry Shum Jr. and Jessica Marie Garcia and we got the files for it a couple weeks ago and it's just so much fun. It's like listening to a radio show or, you know, a, a movie. Um, and it's basically Amy is Olive's twin sister and um, Olive and Ethan are going to elope thinking that the, to make it easy on Amy and Amy is not about that at all. So she sort of takes over. And then we are probably, there will probably be two Silo books next year, but only one is announced. We're writing one of them right now. So hopefully we'll be able to talk about them soon. I was very sad when I saw the the audiobook announcement. I was like, y'all didn't even hint. Well, and like, yeah. no, you guys didn't even hint about Scandalize. Like, you mentioned it as your pick for books that you were hyped about. And when I was like, did I miss that hint? <laughs> no, no. Like, we, she did not want it to be, like, attached to kind of Christina Lauren. And so we didn't blurb it. We didn't, like, I talk about it because I love it genuinely. It's fantastic. Yeah, I love it. So I talked about it all I want. Like, nobody was going to tell me I couldn't talk about it. But she just wasn't saying it. And then somebody thought that they would be a detective and figured out, like, oh, this tattoo matches this and this floor and this and this. And as, like, sort of protective bestie that, like, riled me up and because I feel like authors if they want to have pseudonyms they should be able to have pseudonyms like it's it's not a puzzle for people to solve um so she did you know come out that it was her and so now I can talk about it however I want <laughs> <laughs> what was it like for you in writing a book without your writing partner I mean it was weird um but also I wrote it so fast we were like on a vacation it was during 2020 and so um, we had finished writing Soulmate Equation, and we were like, let's take a month off before we go do something else. And, a whole month. A month. And, yeah, and so I wrote it. So it was really fast. It wasn't long enough to be, like, weird or whatever. But, I mean, I sent her every chapter as I finished it. So it's not like she wasn't, like, aware and involved. We called it side piece for the longest time because <laughs> it was my side piece. Um, and so that's, like, all my files for it are called side piece. I can't believe that title didn't stick. <laughs> <laughs> And the last question we always ask, because this is literary hype, what books are you hyped about? So I'm reading Do Your Worst by Rosie Dannon. It comes out this fall, and it's just, she's amazing. She's an amazing writer. She's the author of The Roommate, for anyone who's read that one, and The Intimacy Experiment. And um, yeah, she's just, it's so good. I can't, I can't rave about it enough, so I'm really excited for readers to get it. Um, so I start right before I left, I got Adriana Herrera's new book. Um, and it's a sapphic romance, um, but I did not bring it because we are counting like every ounce on our thing. And Allie Hazelwood's next book, Love Theoretically, we like just love everything that she does. I mean, her blurb for this book yeah. uh, yes, is yes, so amazing. I, I mean, I've, I the word horny makes me just like, ah, but I mean, that's fine, put it on the front. <laughs> I, mean, I wrote it out and I put it on my shelf talker at the bookstore. I love it. We will see how long my boss lets it stay up. I love it. <laughs> well, thanks so much for hanging out with me and talking about the true love experiment. That's I'm so nice. excited. Thank Best you. book I've read this year. Y'all need to get Thank it. You. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks again to Christina and Lauren for taking the time to talk with me before their St. Louis tour stop for the True Love Experiment. I love talking to them. They are such fabulous people. So definitely check out their book, The True Love Experiment. It is available now and it is so, so good. It's one of my favorite books of the year and I mean that, truly mean that, that I love this book. Um, so definitely look down below and click on those links so you can get a copy for yourself. And if you're not already following them on social media, there is a link to find them there as well. And while you're on that side of the video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, and turn on your notifications so you know when the next author conversation is coming. And trust me, there are some good ones on the way. You don't want to miss out. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.